All right, this lesson is part two of section 4.4 .4 on rate of change and slope. Our objective for today is to determine the slope from a table of values. So it sounds like we're doing something different, but we're actually doing the exact same thing that we were doing before. Um, in the last lesson, we learned what a rate of change is. Um, a rate of change is the same thing as slope. So when you see the word slope, don't get confused. It just means another way of saying rate of change. So remember, rate of change is the change in the y values over the change in the x values. And we use those that triangle, remember, tri change in y over change in x. So when it asks you in this first example here to find the slope using the table of values, really it's just asking you to find the rate of change, which we did yesterday in class. So we're going to find the change in the y values. And in this case, the y values here in the first example, these are all increasing by 7. So the change in y is 7 and we're going to put that over the change in x. The change in x here, these are increasing by 2. So the slope here is 7 over 2. Um, I'm going to add one little thing here. We're going to get to this in another lesson, but slope, a variable that, dis, um, that we use for slope is m. Okay, It's kind of something um, you're going to see a lot, so just, just write this down on your paper. We'll get to that in a little bit, but um, I'm just going to write slope equals m. Okay. Next example here, if I look at the x values, these are all increasing by 2, right? We go up by 2. Where the y values, this time we're going down by 7. So if we find this rate of change here, this is going to be change in y over change in x. So the slope, which is the same as the rate of change, is going to be negative 7 over the change in x here, which is positive 2. So overall, that's negative 7 halves. Now in this next example here, it's kind of special because if I look at the table here, I notice that the x values are not decreasing or increasing here. So I'm just going to write that the change here is just 0, right? The change is 0. I'm either adding or subtracting 0. It's the same idea though. It's not changing at all. Now the y values, these are decreasing by 7 still. Right, we're going down by 7. If I do my change in y over change in x to get my slope here, I end up with negative 7 over 0. If I try to type that in my calculator, I get an error message because this is something that's undefined. We can't divide by 0. I hope you learned that sometime in your math career before this, but we can't divide by 0. It's just not possible. We get an error message in our calculator when we do that. It's because this is undefined. So instead of writing an answer here with um, a rate of change with numbers, with a fraction, we actually make sure that we have our slope here and we write undefined. So this is an undefined slope. All right, now in our last example here, the x values, these are increasing by 2. But if I look at the y values, again, I notice that they're not changing at all, right? So in this particular example, when I do change in y over change in x, the change in y here, that's just 0. The change in x is positive, and it's 2. But if I take 0 and I divide 0 by anything, I always get 0. So here, my slope is just 0. So to recap here, in the first example, I had a slope that was positive. It was 7 over 2. It was positive. My second slope right here was negative, negative 7 over 2. Then in the third example, I had a slope that was undefined, and that was because I divided by 0. In the last example, I had 0 on top, so when I divide 0 by anything, I still get 0. So this is okay to do in our calculator, and I just write slope is 0. Okay, now the next part of the lesson is determining the type of slope when you have a graphic representation of a linear equation. So we've been graphing lines, right? And um, every type of line that we see looks a little bit different, but sometimes we have a line that when we read it from left to right, it goes uphill. Sometimes it goes downhill. Sometimes, like when we have a vertical line, it just goes straight up and down. And sometimes when we have a horizontal line, it just goes across left to right. So we have different types of slope here that are represented. I've got a little skier, and that's kind of how I want you to remember the type of slope that you have. So you always imagine your skier going across your page left to right. And if he's going uphill, we call this a positive slope. Okay, so this slope is positive. That's kind of like what we just had up here. Remember our slope here was positive, 7 over 2. In our next example, um, when the skier is going downhill, this is negative. So we have a negative slope. 
And remember, right above it, we had a negative 7 halves as our slope. Now, when you have a skier that's going straight up and down a hill like this, I would say that that's pretty scary. Um, I don't really have a great analogy for this, but oh my goodness, he could die, right? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but that's how I remember undefined, you could die. So this is an undefined slope. When a skier is going up and down just like this, straight down a hill, we call that undefined. Now when your skier going left to right like this is on a flat hill like that, well his speed, his speed here if you think about it, it's zero. So this is a slope of zero like we had in this particular problem right here. So that's how we're going to try to remember it, just a visual representation of the different types of slope that you have. So a positive slope just means you're going uphill, a negative slope means you're going downhill. Undefined slope means you're going, whoa, you're going to crash. Um, a zero slope means you have no speed. You have to kind of push yourself across the hill, okay? All right, now finally, for the last part of this lesson here, we're asked to find the slope between two points. So given the two points here, we can find the rate of change, right, which is just the same thing as a slope. So just because these points are listed um, as coordinates instead of in a table doesn't mean we don't do it any differently. So I'm just going to write it right underneath. I'm going to show 5, negative 4 underneath, almost like this is an x, y table. Here's your x values, here's your y values. So if I look at the change in my y values over my change in x values, I will get the slope, right? So again, m is just the same thing as slope. So if I look at my change in x values, my x values, they're actually increasing by 2. I go from negative 6 to negative 4, which is an increase of 2. So my change in y is positive, it's 2, and then if I look at my change in x here, if I go from 3 to 5, that's also an increase of 2. So this is plus 2 on both of them. So my change in x here is also positive, and I'm going to simplify that, and I'm going to simplify that to 1. So 2 over 2, that's equal to 1, or 1 over 1, okay? All right, for my last example, I'm going to write 5, negative 7, and then Underneath that, in a table form, I'll write negative 2, negative 1. So if I look at the points now, my change in y over change in x is going to be, let's look at the um, change in y here. For this guy, I'm going up by 6, from negative 7 to negative 1. That's an increase of 6, so that's positive 6. And for the x values, if I go from 5 to negative 2, that's a decrease, right, because I'm going down, and that's a decrease of 7, so that's negative 7. So my slope here is negative 6 over 7. All right? Okay, so as a recap, we started off by just doing a rate of change, essentially, which is the same thing as slope. So it's no different from what we did yesterday, but we did get two different kinds of rates of change that we haven't seen before. We had an undefined rate of change and a uh, slope of 0. Okay, so we had two different ones we haven't seen yet. And then we got a graphic representation of each type of slope. A positive slope means the skier is going uphill. A negative slope means he's going downhill. An undefined slope means he's going to come down and crash here at the bottom. And a slope of zero means he's got no speed because he's on a horizontal line. Then we finally found the slope between two points. And to find that slope between the two points, all we had to do is rewrite it as a table and find the rate of change like we did yesterday in class. So that's really it. Um, that's the end of the lesson. Nice job. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.